Funspot shocked the world when they announced that Air Force One would be opening up at their Atlanta location. This is not just any ordinary roller coaster by Rocky Mountain Construction, one of the premier roller coaster manufacturers in the world. This is an absolute monstrosity, standing 155 feet in the air, speeds of 64 miles per hour, four inversions. Air Force One was destined to be one of the greatest roller coasters on the planet, and it is built at what is essentially an oversized carnival. If you've ever been to Fun Spot Atlanta, there is not much else here. If you're going to that park, it's now going to be for Airy Force One. But this is the biggest roller coaster that they've ever installed at any of their parks. It also happens to be the second roller coaster in the Atlanta area built by RMC. The other, of course, being Twisted Cyclone at Six Flags Over Georgia. And let me just say, this ride stomps all over Twisted Cyclone. Airy Force One is a must-do if you're coming to this area. It's also a relatively small park. You pay per ride, so it's free to enter, but you can get a wristband, and that will allow you to ride Airy Force One as many times as you want, which is something you're going to want to do. I highly recommend you get the wristband and not just pay for one ride. But this is going to be my full in-depth look at the attraction. I'm going to break it all down element by element, tell you what you can expect. But of course, let's first start with that entry experience, what you're going to see and notice as you approach this ride. Now, as you're driving up to Fun Spot Atlanta, Airy Force One is going to be the first thing you're going to see. You're driving past a bunch of trees and then bam, massive roller coaster. It makes a huge first impression. It's so random and kind of hilarious, but man, if it doesn't make you want to stop and go for a ride. The actual roller coaster station is located in the back of the park. So once you've parked and walked in, you're going to walk straight back into the left. For the most part, this roller coaster follows an L-shaped layout. The shorter part is what you see when you're driving in. And then you have this long stretch going across the midway up and over the arcade building to the other side. And it looks great. It is shiny and new. That red, white, and blue just pops. And for a place called Fun Spot America, what more fitting colors than this? Now, the actual roller coaster has a bit of a space theme. At least, sort of. The actual name is, of course, a play on Air Force One. But then when you're actually in the station in the queue, there's a bunch of references to, like, mission control, rocket fuel. When you dispatch, you hear liftoff sequence engaged, preparing for launch. And then as you come back in, landing complete, mission success. Like, that strikes me as a space theme, but Air Force One implies planes. So, I don't know. It's a bit of both, I guess. It is more theming than you would typically expect at a fun spot park. You know, it's not like we're Universal or even Cedar Fair level theming here. But frick, Air Force One has better theming than Pantheon does at Busch Gardens. So absolutely, it's better than I expected. I love these Easter eggs here on this whiteboard. You can see like RMC mentioned and a couple other cool things. And it's a great looking train too. It's only five cars long instead of the usual six. I did not get a confirmation on why that change was made. If I had to take a guess, it could be for cost. It could also be for capacity. It's not really necessary with this size of the park or it could just be with how this ride takes its elements it performs better with one less car but Air Force One does also have two trains and when we were at Fun Spot they're running two trains the entire time I was there all throughout opening weekend and even when it was a walk-on they definitely did not need to be running two trains but they were as with most roller coasters, I do recommend riding this in the front and the back. A lot of people we talked to preferred the front over the back, which I totally get. And realistically, I probably agree with them. I think the main advantage to the back is the first drop. But all the other elements, I, I do think I like more in the front. But try both out for yourself. See what you think. When you dispatch out of the station, straight away, you have two little bunny humps. Gives you a little pop of airtime. It's a taste of what's to come. As you start your lift hill, for the first half, you're going to be going at a pretty slow speed. This is because Air Force One has a very short brake run. And so when it's operating with two trains, they have to wait for the train behind you to park in the station before your train is cleared to go throughout the layout. There's only room for one train on that brake run. So it's a pretty smart design. But I imagine if they operate with one train, it'll just go full speed the entire time. As you're climbing up, you'll see a bunch of trees to your right. There's the road to your left. If you look a bit further down, there's also a good chance that you'll see a bunch of planes landing at the Atlanta airport. They're always flying by. It's only about a 20 minute drive from Fun Spot, which also makes it convenient if you're flying in for the weekend. Now, as you crest over this drop, you're going to descend 146 feet down to the ground an 83 degree angle. So almost vertical. It sounds pretty impressive, but I'll be honest, I thought this was a pretty forgettable drop. And I know that sounds crazy. Don't get me wrong, in the back you will get some air. However, Air Force One is full of a bunch of outstanding moments, and in my opinion, this is not one of them. I didn't hear anyone throughout opening weekend 
raving about, oh man, that first drop, you know? They're talking about moments later in the layout. But I can think of a bunch of other first drops on RMCs that I like a lot more than Air Force Ones. So just think of it like the ride's just getting started. Your first big element is the Raven Truss Dive. So think of it like a dive loop, but you're entering these boxy supports. The truss is the same design that RMC uses for like their lift hill. That's what gives that very minimalist look. So while normally you're riding on the outside of that, now you're inside. You get pretty close to some of those supports and it gives this like tunneling effect. For me, I did think that the front was better for this element, but again, I didn't think that this was like a standout moment on Airy Force. But it is very cool. I also like how you just slightly twist to the side, like laterally. And then as you dive down to the ground, you hit a bunny hump. And this I thought was an amazing moment of airtime. Probably one of the best speed hills I've ever experienced. Like I think about the speed hill on Steel Vengeance right after that first drop. This one's just way more powerful. And then you hit your stall. And this is just fantastic. It is so prolonged and you just hit this perfect zero G. You're just floating upside down. The entry and exit experience is just so fluid. Definitely one of the best stalls out there. Right up there with Zadra and Goliath at Great America. And in my opinion, this is really when the ride gets going. The beginning is good, don't get me wrong. But as you start to get towards the middle of this ride, it gets nuts. So next up is an outer bank turn that goes over the station. And this is just incredible. Absolutely one of the highlights of the ride. It lasts for so long and banks you at about a 60 degree angle, which is pretty steep. You are ejected the entire time. It lasts about a second or two longer than you would expect. If this isn't the best outer bank turn out there, then it's gotta be at least top three. The ejector airtime is just so far sustained. It is fantastic. And next up, we have a double up. So the first step up into this larger airtime hill is good. You go up out of your seat a little bit, but the main kicker here is the second up or that larger hill. And really, this is like the second big drop on the ride because as you're going over this hill, you're descending for what feels like forever. This gives you more airtime than the first drop. It honestly reminds me of the last drop on Iron Quasi. How that feels like the second biggest drop on the ride and it's literally into the brake run. So this one is right smack in the middle of the coaster and you go from a high moment on the coaster now to a low one. This next element goes directly over a building. It's technically a zero G roll, but everyone at the event was calling it the arcade roll because it goes over the arcade. And I like that, so I'm gonna call it the arcade roll. This element is insane. It is so whippy and it is crazy how flat you are. You're staying at the same height the entire time. This is RMC's version of the Mosasaurus roll. Is it as good as that moment on Velocicoaster? In my opinion, no, because that element has a bit more lateral twist to it. But man, this has got to be like a top five inversion. Joe Draves was the designer for this coaster. He also designed Max Force at Six Flags Great America. And in my opinion, this element feels very similar as that main inversion on that coaster. So the arcade rule is what sends you to the other side of this building. And this is like the turnaround to head back towards the station. And Air Force One does this in the form of an outer bank hill. This throws you pretty hard. It's a great twist to the outside. It's a brief pop of airtime, but still very good. I think you feel a bit more in the front than the back. And now you're banking to the right. And I would say this is the most forceful part of the coaster. It's very sustained. It's not quite a gray out, but it's pretty close. Maybe later this summer when it's like 90 degrees out and it's flying, that'll be a gray out moment. But I really like the forces that you pull here. And that sends you into your final inversion. This is number four. And this is an amazing roll. Like you already had a phenomenal inversion with the arcade roll, but this one is like almost as good. You just naturally rotate into this thing. But what's so weird is that you flip the opposite direction of what you would expect. And I think that's what makes it feel different from every other RMC inversion. Jake Kilcup, RMC's COO, described this as like a flattened underflip. So think of that moment on like Joker or Untamed, but you squish it. I think that makes a lot of sense. I totally see it. And then you enter the chili dip because there's already so many hilarious names on RMCs. Now we got one more. This is an Alan Shilkey's coin term that you see when snowboarding. Basically, it's when you rise up onto an elevated surface, dish out, and then drop down again. So in this case, you're banking to the left, you level out, drop down a little bit, and that's what sends you into your quad down. And this is the big finale on Air Force One, and the airtime is so powerful, it hurts. It actually feels like a bucking Bronco. You got to prepare yourself for this. And you know, as we were talking to people, it seemed like everyone was split down the middle on what they thought of it. There were a lot of people who liked it, but then there were also a lot of people who thought it was too much. 
So it seems like this is the limit of what people can experience when it comes to airtime. Because when this was first announced, we were like, oh my gosh, a quad down, it's gonna be like the quad down on lightning rod. You know, when it's going down the mountain, but it's also twisting side to side. Well, this, there's no laterals at all. You are straight in a line, almost like the ending on Steel Vengeance, except on Air Force One, all of the hills are about the same size. You're like barely stepping down. The main time where you see it is like right there at the end. And I think what would make me enjoy this a bit more is if it had a bit of twist to it, like lightning rods, or maybe had varying hill sizes. Because I think right now where it's just so repetitive, it can leave bruises on your thighs. It's that crazy. In my opinion, what they should have done is draw out the elements a bit more and have one less hill. I actually think that would have improved the coaster. The other thing it would have done is allow them to extend the brake run. Like, yeah, okay, I'm not saying that you need a brake run that can accommodate two trains on there. But at the moment, this brake run feels too short. Like, you come to a stop so hard. And you really feel it because you're rising up into the brakes. It's a bit more comfortable in the front. But, I mean, when you're in the back, you're flying up into your restraint. And it kind of hurts. Like, think about how Iron Gwazi and Zadra fly to a stop. This does it, but it's like mid-airtime hill. I mean, you're going to lurch forward a decent amount. I understand that they had a limited amount of space to work with, but I think that this is a great example of less would be more. You already have so many incredible moments on this coaster. I think this part is going to be what causes people to say, okay, maybe I need to sit out, take a breather before riding again. For me personally, it's the element on this ride that prevents me from ranking it higher than I currently do. And I never thought I would say that about a quad down. So for Air Force One's final score, I'm giving it a 9 out of 10 because it does so much right and is just shy of being a perfect roller coaster. When this gets to the point where it's like not comfortable, that's where it starts to be a problem. I could see at some point them saying, we got to try and slow this thing down. Do what we can to make that ending not be as brutal as it currently is. But also, I know a lot of people who really like the ending. And if that's you, more power to you. But for me, I thought it was too much. But you know, despite all that, I still put this as an upper tier RMC. That's how good everything else is. And you know, it's also rare that you say the best moments of the ride are in the middle, not right at the beginning or not right at the end. So I really commend the folks at RMC for all the work they put into this thing. It really is a great coaster. I highly recommend you come out to Fun Spot Atlanta, give it a try, let me know what you think. And if you've ridden Air Force already, please comment down below. What do you think of it? Do you agree with the points that I brought up? And of course, make sure to stay tuned for more coaster reviews here here at Coaster Studios, and I'll see you next time.